In this lecture, we continue by talking about the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. The Fed controls the amount of money that is available to circulate in the economy through what is called monetary policy. Without this intervention, the supply of and demand for money to use for purchases and other transactions would might become out of balance. The, this could result in perhaps rapid price and price increases or inflation if there's a lot of money out there. Or if there's too little money, then there could be some sort of an economic decline because all of a sudden people couldn't buy anything and prices would decline. That's disinflation. Because of too little growth in the money supply, you might have a problem where prices start to go down because people just don't have enough money to buy things. And supply increases, prices would come down. To effectively control the supply of money in the economy, the Fed must have a good idea of how much money is in circulation at any given point in time. This is because this is becoming increasingly challenged because challenging because there's there's so many different types of money and the global nature of the economy means that more and more dollars, U.S. dollars, are circulating around the world overseas in global markets. Using many different measures or several different measures of money supply, the Fed establishes specific growth targets which presumably ensure a close balance between money supply and money demand. The Fed fine-tunes money growth by using four basic tools. We'll talk about each of those in a little more detail, but the, those tools are the open market operations, they call them, reserve requirements, how much banks have to hold in reserve, the discount rate, the, the, that's an, the interest rate for overnight ex exchanges of money with banks, and credit controls. You can see some more information about these um, on this slide. There's generally a log, a, a, a lag of from six to 18 months before the effect of these imp actually impact or change the economy overall. Now here are some tools for, for impacting the money supply. One thing that the government could do is buy government securities. The Fed can just print money, if you will, and say they're buying securities, transfer money into the government accounts to buy government securities, that is government bonds, government treasuries, which are short-term bonds. Sell government securities, they can sell some of the securities they have in their balance sheet, uh, which means people have to give them money that will reduce money supply. They can raise the discount rate, that's the uh, money that uh, the rate of interest that people, that banks have to pay in order to uh, borrow money uh, from the Fed over for overnight uh, reasons to make sure they cover their balances, or they can lower the discount rate, which makes it easier to increase to borrow money, and therefore the money supply in increases, uh, economic activity therefore increases. The other things that the Fed can do is increase reserve requirements. Um, what that means is banks have to hold more money in their vaults to cover their loans, which means less money is in the economy. Uh, they have they could decrease the reserve requirements, which means more money it goes into the economy because banks have to keep less. They can relax credit controls, meaning people are encouraged to make major purchases because it's easier to get credit and therefore money flows, it increases the money flow in the economy, or the reverse, that is restrict credit controls. And so therefore it's harder to borrow money and less money flows in the economy and that decreases economic activity. So let's just review this for a second. The Federal Reserve, one of its main roles is to keep the money flowing. It's the key part of keeping our economy moving forward and balancing it, stopping it from growing too fast, which is called being hot, or slowing down, being cold, or contracting. One of the roles that, that they have for doing this is controlling the money supply. Money is the lifeblood of the economy. Of course, if you don't have money, you're not buying anything. If you have too much money, sometimes it, as they say, burns a hole in people's pocket. And, it, and people start buying things which um, increases demand and may increase prices. 
Uh, if banks become too protective of their funds, this can stop the flow of, of uh, money in the economy. Uh, I mentioned before about the, the uh, uh, Federal Deposit Insurance. Banks stop giving their money back or they stop lending money uh, or people start to become afraid they can't get their money out of banks can be a problem. The Fed manages that both on the credit side and the deposit side with this deposit insurance so people are assured they'll get their money back. But let's look more deeply into these four main mon monetary policy tools that uh, the Federal Reserve has to manage the money supply. The Fed fine tunes the, the, the economy and money growth using these four basic tools. It's called open market operations, reserve requirements, the discount rate, and credit controls. Uh, remember those four items. We've talked about them a few minutes ago. We'll dive more deeply into them here. Remember also that there's generally a 6 to 18 month lag that occurs before these effects really show themselves in the economy because they're working deeply at where the money supply is in the banking transactions. And so to get out to the consumers and to make companies want to invest, it takes them a while to figure out what their plans are and to forecast their longer term results. So let's talk about each of these. Open market operation refers to the decisions that are taken to buy or sell U.S. Treasury bills. These are short term debt that's issued by the United States government. They're also called T-bills. And other investments in the open market, meaning you buy them at treasury auctions. The U.S. Treasury comes out when it needs to fund its um, operations and it sells bonds, so people give it money uh, that it can use. And those bonds can be purchased by the Federal Reserve. Uh, in fact, many of them are. In some cases, most of them are. And so that's how the government gets its funds that to run its business, pay its bills, you know, fly the, uh, uh, keep the Air Force in the in the air, that sort of thing, pay for air traffic controls, and that sort of stuff. Um, so you buy the, the 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 Fed can also sell those bills that it has uh, to the general general public, um, and then that money comes into the Fed and is pulled out of the economy because now it's in the Fed coffers. Coffers being a uh, just in, in terms of its accounts. There's not really, if you notice, there's not really printed cash that's flowing around here. It's, uh, it's recorded transactions. Uh, the second major mo monetary policy tool is the reserve requirements. This is the percentage of deposits that banking institutions are required to hold in reserve, that is in the vault, if it were. It's not really a vault because many times it's just recorded transactions. Um, the funds are not so held are therefore not available for lending. They have the money in their accounts, in their vaults, and so therefore they, it can't be lended out. That means that there's less money in the economy, more in the banks, which means that there's more reserve if there's a rush or a run or a need for capital, but at the same time, less is flowing within the economic system. So let's continue. The third monetary policy that the Federal Reserve uses is the discount rate. This is the rate of interest that the Fed charges to loan money to any banking institution that needs it in order to maintain its reserve requirements. In other words, I'm a bank and I need to have money in reserve, but I've just made a giant loan to a big um, industrial firm. I need some capital in my, uh, in my vault, so I borrow from the Fed. There's a rate associated with that. A discount rate associated with that, I have to pay uh, this overnight rate to the to the Federal Reserve to borrow that money. As long as I hold it, I have to pay the Fed a little bit. You know, that's what they refer to, you know, as raising the Fed discount rate. Uh, the Fed is the lot the lender of last resorts for money for many banks. For these banks, they can always go to the Fed. The Fed will will loan money if necessary to maintain the banking system. Um, the final tool of the Fed's arsenal of weapons is credit controls and the authority to establish and enforce new or uh, existing credit rules for financial institutions and some private investors. So they have to meet certain credit requirements, reporting requirements and that sort of thing to maintain their, their certifications, their bank certifications. They need to maintain these, uh, these, they have to follow certain credit rules. And the more you put in, the, in place, the less lending there is 
and therefore it slows down the money um, again. So remember, we're talking about um, open market transactions, we're talking about reserve requirements, we're talking about the discount rates, and we're talking about credit controls. These are the four main areas that the Fed uses to manage the flow of money throughout the entire economy. Um, in the next uh, lecture, we'll talk about some of the Fed's other responsibilities.